Thanks, guys. The SU community was rocked by the assault that happened recently at an off-campus party on Ackerman Avenue. On Monday, members of the student body let their feelings be known. On NCC News, I'll have the story of a triple sport athlete who plays for the Lafayette Lancer lacrosse program who hit the shot of his life and the impact he had on the program. That story and more when NCC News returns. At 4 o'clock, I'll tell you about a real estate website that says rent prices went up 10% in Syracuse last year. I'll have reaction from the local tenant organization and also from runners. Stay tuned. Girls lacrosse has a high concussion rate, surpassed only by football, boys ice hockey, boys lacrosse, and girls soccer. Kowski was asked to make a position change. His junior year, he played on the defensive side of the ball, and this year, he had to make the switch to a midfielder. And his coach said that is just the type of player and the type of leader Reed Jakowski is. Orange After Dark and what you guys want to do with that. So all year we've been working on. Shopping Town Mall officially closed its doors last September. New records show that the store has been sold to a company for $3.9 million. The company Transform Selco is referred to as the new Sears and is owned by a former Sears holding chairman. For today, controversy around abortion laws are sweeping the nation and it's prevalent here in central New York. In an interview, Angela Merkel, the German chancellor, warned of dark forces rising in Germany. These forces are finding mainstream support in the country. The forces are nationalism, anti-Semitism, and nativism. Merkel said that Germans need to look at history. Our top story this hour, the university says it is taking action in response to student anger over the assault of three students at an off-campus party. The university sponsored a forum at Gifford Auditorium where students talked about what happened and what steps they say SU needs to take in response. Our Kylan Watson is live in the newsroom with the story. Thanks, guys. The SU community was rocked by the assault that happened recently at an off-campus party on Ackerman Avenue. On Monday, members of the student body let their feelings be known. I asked, where is Jaya? And someone yelled, he's being beaten up outside and someone has a gun. During the forum, students and community members voiced their concerns as it related to safety on and off campus. Two of the victims of the assault spoke and gave their accounts of what happened. Anger in his eyes, and that's when I was met with a, a racial slur. And in that moment, I had two choices, and I, I had to defend myself. And as I was defending myself, it led to a fight. And as we were fighting on the ground, um, that's when I was struck with a pistol. The administration said three representatives, the Dean of Students Rob Haraski, Interim Chief of Diversity Dr. Keith Alford, and DPS Chief Bobby Maldonado. Chancellor Ken Severu also attended but did not speak. Students were critical of the first statement DPS made describing what happened. They said it downplayed the racially charged nature of what happened, but Haraski said it was all the information they had at the time. Students feel when they say that they're terrified of walking on this campus, and I also hope that this is like the first of many, many, many steps towards addressing this issue that we have on campus of race relations with law enforcement. The community members demanded that the administration create an event for students to meet with the Syracuse Police Department and late night transportation options be created to get students to and from places safely. Some students, though, plan to hold the university accountable. And putting a spotlight on how DPS conducts its investigations and what their relationship is with um, the Syracuse Police Department in general. Syracuse Police Department did not send a representative to the forum. But the department did release a statement saying the attack was not racially motivated. Many students say the incident has motivated them and they will not be silent anymore when it comes to race relations on this campus. The administration says it is committed to making a change and listening to students' feedback. Reporting live, I'm Colin Watson for Mornings on the Hill. Ahmed Ashton, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation released a study that says Skinny Atlas Lake is getting warmer. Over the past 40 years, the temperature increase has happened, has happened over the past 40 years. Surface temperatures in the lake have increased by 1.3 degrees. The biggest increase has happened since 1996, 
and the temperature increase is creating a fertile ground for toxic algae blooms. These algae blooms have sprung up over the past two years. Skinny Atlas Lake serves as the unfiltered source of drinking water for 200,000 households in neighboring municipalities in Skinny Atlas and the city of Syracuse. The algae forced city officials to add chlorine into the tap water to keep the blooms from spreading into it, and the deep waters in the lake are getting warmer earlier as well. Towards the bottom of the lake, the water is colder, and the area can also expect an increase of rainfall as well, as we, saw, as we saw earlier today. And the rain and the warm temperatures may lead to more algae blooms in the area. So, Donna Ashton, according to this report, climate change is having a significant impact on the area, and now it is up to county and city officials to figure out how they will deal with it. Back to you guys.